Welcome back to the post game brought to you by ArchCitySports.com. I'm Nick Yale. Alongside me is Andrew Manzier. Hi. And Jeremy Card, boys. How's it going? We're back. We're talking St. Louis Cardinals, St. Louis Rams, St. Louis FC, St. Louis Blues. First, though, we're going to start out the uh, Cardinals' big, 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 big 3-2 win last night. Absolutely y- huge. Yeah. Yadier Molina. How came, about him? Came through in the clutch. He hit a triple. That's probably his triple. What is more rare, Yadier Molina hitting a triple or Pete Cosma getting a base hit? Oh, now you're really putting us on the spot on this one. Can I get back to you on that one? You yeah. can. You I'll can take tweet. a rain check on that. You can that. tweet at me, at Nick Yale. You can tweet at Andrew Manziera. I'm, M-A-N-D-Z-I-A-R-A. I'm the Manziera and at J Carp Sports Fan. That's Jeremy. And if you want to get involved with this podcast, give us a shout-out on the Twitter, at Art City Sports, or on Facebook. Also, same, Art City Sports, or you can go to the website, artshittysports.com. So, boys, what were your original thoughts with the uh, the big Cardinals win last night? Well, I mean, it, it was Yadier Molina's first triple since 2011. So, if you do have to be technical, yes, Yadier Molina getting a triple is more rare than Pete Cosmo getting a base hit. But there are plenty of chances throughout that game that the Cardinals could have taken a lead over the White Sox. Who and honestly, it was a two nothing game for throughout the first half of the entire ball game last night. Lance Lynn and John Danks were doing it out pretty well. It wasn't one of Lynn's best outings, but it still wasn't a blowout for Chicago. It seems like lately he's he's not been pitching elite or or really well per se, but he's he's getting the job done. He's just there. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, he's not, giving you consistent five, right. six innings. You know, not not wearing down he's the not bullpen flashy, too much. But, but he's not terrible. That's, yeah, that's and that's fine. It's right. Really, it's really what the Cardinals need right now uh, is is dominant pitching because consistency too. Yeah. Could, yeah. The, the uh, it's a good word to use consistent pitching uh, because the offense Thank has you. has been struggling again as of late. Um, Lance Lynn, especially in that start last night, it was almost like a. a Throwback Thursday moment where he uh, with the, with the run support really lacking and the run support's been lacking for a lot of these guys. But so it's good to have those starters on your staff like Waka, Lackey, Martinez, um, and Lynn who can all go deep six seven innings into the game. So you don't have to be using your bullpen uh, yeah. night in and night Too out. Too much yeah. like earlier well, in the year when the it bullpen been, kept coming in. Right, and it could have been a way back Wednesday since it was on a Wednesday, not a Throwback Thursday since today is Thursday. But, you, know, you know, I, I get my days mixed up. Sometimes, sorry, Andrew. We can't, oh. we, we can't all we can't all be as good as you. You're not perfect like me. That's for sure. So the Cardinals, they get the win. They get uh, the sweep in Chicago. Kind yeah, of, you know, it's kind of a little bit of payback after what Chicago did in St. Louis. They uh they got the Royals tonight, and I think we have the uh, starting lineup here. Yes, we let's, do. Let's get a look. Oh, for do it. we? Wonderful. Starting lineup for tonight against Kansas City. Top of the order: Colton Wong leading off. Matt Carpenter playing third and batting second. Holiday in left field batting third. Peralta's your shortstop. Hayward in right field. Molina behind the dish. Grichuk out in center. Piscotti gets to start at first base. And Lackey is on the hill. Probably most of you will be listening to this podcast after the game starts. But in case uh, we do get it up in time, we don't usually get it up before the game starts. Yeah. But in case, Don't say it that in way. In case we do. Don't say it that way. In case we do. Hey, we're, we're still learning, you know. This we're, is an expert podcast. We're trying to, we're figuring it out. We got a, we got a new, brand new studio. Yes, brand new, brand new studio. So this is, this is good. We might be on the one step in the right direction. It is one step in the right, right direction. We might We've be got going. a huge rubber band ball. I see. We've got some great Tony Larusa novels. Uh, There's a lot of good Paul stuff. Dixon. If, uh, if hidden if, language of baseball. If any oh, yeah. you, people obviously who are listening to this don't know what we're talking about, but we are in. In uh, my bedroom closet, actually, so that the uh, <laughs> you get the good acoustics in here. I was not for this, but you know, it was actually Andrew's idea. He was uh, he was the one that suggested. No. He's like, you know, Nick, you got you got great acoustics in a small space. I want to be real close to you. I think we should do it in your closet. I think I said I want to be across from the table of you, so we don't play footsie as we do as you try the other what four podcasts we've done. I mean, hey. anyway. Well, what, what can you do? When you were talking about the lineup earlier, I know this is a riveting conversation between our lovely location here, but it absolutely you, mentioned, is. you mentioned Stephen Piscotti, and I think we let everybody know how he's done so far in his long-awaited call-up to the major leagues. He's had a two fifty batting average, he's had eight at-bats, one run, and two hits so far, and a lot of people are wondering, will he take a lot of reps at first base? And play some Mark Reynolds, and I'm wondering what you guys think about 
that whole rotation shuffling going on. I think it's kind of like the outfield situation, really. I mean, you got to play whoever's hot, and if Reynolds is, is batting well and he's playing good at first, I think you play him. And I think if he's kind of struggling, well, you might as well put Piscotti in there since he's up with the club, just like they have with John Jay before he went on the DL with, with Borges and Gritchick playing left and center and respectively, and Hayward being a consistent right fielder. So, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, pitching from the, the AAA level to the major league level, as much as people want to say it's not that different, it really is different. Guys in AAA are throwing low 90s, but they're not really painting corners yet. Guys in the majors are throwing 96, 97 and painting that outside corner, um, you know, with a two-strike fastball. So, hitting, as we've seen with the uh, late Oscar Taveras, uh, it's definitely a change hitting from AAA to the major league, but right. hopefully, like like you said, Piscotty's doing well so far, only eight at bats. So um, I think Matheny will play him. You know, maybe get a good look at him and, and see what he can do in the batter's box. What do you think, Nick? Mo said when he brought him up that he wants he's gonna, they're going to get him four or five games per week per week. So they're going to they're going to give Piscotty his chance, and yeah. I think why they're doing that is before they decide whether or not they're going to make a move at the first base, they're going to give Piscotty his opportunity to perform and well, say, and why wouldn't you yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah say he does perform say you know it's a long way to wait for him to come up here right say he's he bats his bats off the chart well then maybe you don't necessarily need to go out there and get a first baseman per sure. se I, they still need a bat off the bench but you might not necessarily yeah. have to go for a first oh, baseman yes because Piscotty's up to play first base right now Mark Ren- I mean Mark Reynolds is doing a fine job he's batting right. 229 uh, mm-hmm. on the year at first base but bringing Piscotty up and making some of these different moves later in the year allows Mark Reynolds to move back into that area where he's comfortable being in that more of a utility player role. Mm-hmm. And then if he understands that role more, then he's going to be able to, to hit and not have to be forced to, to hit the ball out of the park day in and day out, which he's not used to doing right now. All right, and Reynolds is fourth on the team in RBIs with 34, but you know behind Matt Carpenter, uh, Colton Wong, and, and Molina tied for second and then uh you know Peralta with 48 so it's not like he's playing bad by any means and and like I said earlier I think it's totally a different mindset when you enter the season knowing you're going to be most likely just a a late come off pinch hitter right off the bench and then all of a sudden uh Matt Adams goes down with uh, somewhat of a a freak quad tear and and all of a sudden hey hey buddy you're uh you're suiting up every day yeah you're you're getting out there so um but yeah I, I I think they'll most likely get a bat, obviously, but um, you, know, you got to give Piscotty a shot. So, right, and I mean, you look at Piscotty's stats when he was down in Memphis. He had a two seventy two batting average. He had a three sixty six on base percentage. He had eleven home runs, forty one RBIs, and I mean, this is a really talented player, and obviously one of the many players, along with Scruggs and Tommy Pham, who are going to be a part of the future of this organization. You think so? I believe so. I mean, you blend these. And what the Cardinals are doing so well this year is blending some of these veteran players like mm-hmm. Nalina and Holiday and Peralta with the younger guys such as Pham, Garcia, Scruggs, and now Piscotti. Mm-hmm. And I think that gives these rookies, these young guys, a good set to be at, a good standard to be at as the years come on. They have those mentors to really learn a lot of the how going in the major leagues is like. You're listening to the post game brought to you by ArtShittySports.com. Talking Cardinals baseball with here Nick Yale, Andrew Manzier, and Jeremy Carp. We talked a little bit about um, of, about Piscotti. Let's move to a different topic. Talk about the bullpen and specifically Trevor Rosenthal. 29 saves and 31 tries with a 1.29 ERA. Yet he catches some flack right now for for whatever reason. Location's right. not always there. He kind of reminds me of. of Jason Isringhausen in the sense that he, he especially he, in his later part of the he, career he puts he puts two runners on and then gets the job done so he always like makes you really scared yeah but he always gets it he gets it normally most of the time he gets the job done he just scares everybody first before right. doing so so what are your thoughts on Trevor Rosenthal being legit or not so legit he's not, he's having the, the, his career the a career year and I think he's you know for real but come down to the playoff situation. Later in the playoffs, do you think he can still be that guy? Well, I mean, you take a look at, as you were saying earlier, 1.59 ERA. He's 1.29. 1.59? Pit- yeah. No, 1.59. That's actually 1.59. My bad. That's, that's my mistake. But, yeah, he was 29. This is why we're not legit. legit. God. I can't read. <laughs> I'm reading off a small phone. He's 29 for 31 save opportunities, like you had said. But it was earlier last week, something that really came off to me. It was during the game against the New York Mets, one of the ones. He had a 32 or 33 pitch inning. <laughs> 
Now, those are the type of games that really do bring out a lot of the criticism from fans or and analysts alike is if he could if he could be the closer or not. I still believe he can be for the long term because he's 25 years old. He still is a lot better than a lot of the closers we've had in the past. And aside from a couple minor injuries, he's a lot healthier than a lot of the pitchers we've had in the past. Ryan Franklin, Jason Mott, a lot of them they struggled really bad when it came to trying to actually stay healthy as the, while in the closer position. And Rosenthal has. A very po- as everybody knows on, that are fans of baseball, Rosenthal's fastball is one of the best in all of Major League Baseball. It's just trying to find more control in some of his other pitches in the arsenal that he does have to work on if he wants to maintain some sort of consistency as closer. Oh, I agree. And it's not that his fastball is bad, but everyone goes up there, they're like, okay, I'm getting a first pitch fastball, and they're ready for it. So, like Nick said, you know, you get these guys that, or you get. Rosenthal getting out there and he lets one or two guys on consistently, then gets an out or gets a double play or then, you know, one out, first and third. It's like, as a closer, I, I feel like you should be able to come in, get your job done. You know, you have one inning to do. It, sh- it should be done in 20 or less pitches, you know, more or less. And, and you shouldn't have to get, you know, five or seven guys uh, through the order that inning. So, uh, people give him a lot of flack. I mean, I, I'm one of the ones that I think gives him some flack because, like I said, it, it, it's not necessary for for you to let on, you know, get the bases loaded, get two guys on. Oh, and hey, get the hey, I'm pitching. Oh, yeah. crap. Like, I better start, you know, pitching good and not throwing them meatballs down the middle at 90, 93. So, right. Um, but, I mean, 45 innings pitched so far, 29 saves, um, you know, 31 opportunities. So, he's he's... he's 15 walks, which really isn't too bad, I don't no. think. I think that's really well. So it's not like he's pitching you know, out of the zone. He doesn't have control. He obviously has control, but like you said, it's about working on that changeup and that just little other off-speed slider slash curveball that he has that he's trying to develop. And it's hard to develop pitches at a major league level you know, midseason. Cardinals uh, taking on the Royals. That's actually that makeup game, uh, their makeup tonight. And then they go... Still at home, long home stand, Braves, Reds, and then the Rockies. And one of those pitchers they'll be facing during the Braves series is, is actually going to be Shelby Miller. Oh, very so. nice, Shelby oh. Miller. Homecoming. I, I may be going to that game. Yeah. I think actually I am going to that game. What day is that? Is Saturday? Uh, I think it's Saturdays. Yeah, it might be. I think I think so. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going on Sunday. What is? <laughs> what do you think the Cardinals right now, if at anything, do you think they need to move, uh, move or improve on, I should say, uh, before the end of the year, is there one area you guys are looking that the Cardinals need to need to? I think fix? I think if there's one thing they need to fix, I mean they they were entering the second half of the season only two and a half games above the Pirates, mm-hmm. and we are about what five games afterwards, and we're already six games ahead of the Pirates. I mean, but if there's one thing that they should really improve on, it's backing up good pitching performances with run support. And this was something that's been struggling since the begin, the say about May or June. A lot of pitchers on the starting rotation gave really good performances for the Cardinals, shut out innings going into the seventh. However, the run support was probably two runs or less, especially for Lance Lynn. He had and two Garcia. runs, and, yeah. and for Garcia. Garcia is one of the pitchers when he's healthy, he's really good. It's just there's so much problems with him when it comes to staying healthy. Right, but. You take a look. We're sixty and thirty-four right now. We got two more home stand games coming up. Two two more home stand series, I should say. And with one of them being against a division rival on the Reds, I think heading it throughout the rest of the season, we really should focus on giving more run support to strong pitching performances. Thirty-three and twelve at home. I think the Cardinals will inevitably shut down the Royals tonight. The Braves, the Reds, and whoever else comes to Bush Stadium. That's just my thoughts. I'm I'm a little biased. I I would say I guess, but um, I think the I think the area they need to improve obviously is the bench. Uh, it's 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 nice having guys come up from AAA and get some experience and get playing time. But uh, you know, late in the game, as we saw in the, in the Mets game, uh, yeah. uh, you know, the really short one that went I think what 18, 19. Yeah, that was, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. Um, I think it third, only third long... that short. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh gosh, two games in one. I th- I thought too. You know, okay. Well, if we played two games, basically, so uh, Rosenthal had forty eight hours rest. He's good to go. So right. 
Theoretically. Theoretically. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm I know good. you're not a math man, but... I'm, uh, I'm not good at math. I'm that's not, why we're not math majors. Not, we're, not, we're not good communication at majors. It's, we're not, it's, not, do. it's like we're communication majors. We, it's not a real major. We like the words. We don't like the numbers. That's right. Uh, that's actually a good way. I'm going right. to agree with Jeremy there, though. Yeah, uh, Cardinals definitely need to improve improve the run support. You can't expect pitchers to go out here every single night and, and throw, you know six, seven innings and only give up one or two runs. That's just not going to happen. That's not realistic. Exactly. So the bats definitely need to need to what to get it going, fire it up. Consistency. Uh, a, lot of, yeah. a lot of people, yeah, back to the work That's the thing when it comes to the Cardinals, honestly, it's just consistency. Yeah, and I think a lot of people were mad at Molina the other night. I saw a lot of flack on Twitter uh, when he had those three double plays in that 18-inning oh, game. Yeah. Yikes! Um, yeah, that was <laughs> so but I, brutal. I, and how you know holidays come back from injury. So what what can he offer? Mm-hmm. Carpenter's in a he big slump right now. Ago what he can offer? And so I think what, grand slam. Yeah, I think <laughs> what Mo's trying to just do is by bringing up just get a fresh bat in the lineup exactly. to really maybe spark Agreed. this offense in any way possible because a lot of these guys are in one or two slumps. But I think if they can come around and get it all together, it'll all happen at the right time for the Cardinals, and and they can get the job done and. Will it carry over in the playoffs? You, you don't know. That's when you start playing tougher teams. That's really when you need the run support because tough offenses are going to score runs against good pitchers. That's just right. how it is. So well, and like you said, you know, it, like we saw, Carpenter was in quite quite a little slump there uh, lately, and it's like Peralta, Holiday are hitting well, so it doesn't really matter. And that's the thing with the Cardinals. Uh, you know, two months ago is like Cosmos in a slump, Holiday's hurt, Adams is hurt, uh, John Jay was not hitting well, uh, Hayward was not hitting well. So it's like when when you have that happen, where it's five out of the nine guys that are not hitting well, that's when you have really a bad recipe for success. But um, especially as of late, I mean, Holiday's back, going down, 101 bat speed off the ball for the Grand Slam. I mean, that was not, that was not even a strike, that was, by no, the way. No. Yeah, that, was, was that, that was was below nice. the knees and outside, and he put that one into left he just, field he just took it. He for the one. big salami. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I, I, obviously the Cardinals are, are finally back on their winning ways, as we expect them to be, because they are uh, top three in baseball, uh, per the usual, so... Still, still up there. Yep. All year long. And what's interesting to me is when we look at um, the as we're talking about the pitchers and who's in the starting rotation. One name that actually comes to mind. We all know Lackey, Lynn, Waka, Martinez. But then you have that fifth spot that's been rotated in or, in and out with multiple pitchers. But as you, I don't know if you guys have noticed, you might have that with every start, Tim Cooney's actually be getting a lot better. With his command, his location. I mean, his first start was absolutely horrible, two point one yeah. innings pitch. But now he had a really. I think he might have even had a quality start. He didn't get a decision in the, mm-hmm. or any right, of his right. games, but he actually really has improved on his pitching. It's just a matter of who will consistently take that fifth spot. With yeah, I think I think right we'll now. see. You know, Garcia will come back and uh, after his injury, and, and he will be the fifth guy for now. But Cooney and uh, also Marco Gonzalez, who. Pitched last night at, at Double A Springfield will both uh, get an opportunity to probably come up and and get some work in before the uh, the playoffs come up, so that they can limit Walk and Martinez inning. So it's good for the Cardinals that they have a lot of options uh, mm-hmm. for the starters. But you know, so come trade deadline, it'll be interesting, very interesting to see what move the Cardinals make because a lot of people yeah. are saying they don't need a starting pitching anymore. Um, some people say they do need a starting pitching. They definitely need a bat, but there's not really a bat out there. And then just yesterday, the Miami Herald talked about uh, Sishik, I think is that, is that how you say it? Yeah. Sishik. Scott Sishik. Scott Sishik from the uh, Marlins as a potential trade target for the Cardinals, so we'll have to wait and Ooh. see. Well, considering they spent Hashtag all their money developing. on Stanton, yeah. they're going to need a trade. Oh, yeah, so, I mean, they're, you know, kind of – their season's just about over. Um, they're and Casimir just got traded to the Athletics. That's for right. The hashtag prospects, hashtag so. developing. So the yeah. uh, the yeah. moves are making. Uh, moves are happening. We'll probably have more regarding the MLB trade and deadline next week. Uh, when eight we, days away. Eight days yeah. away. Eight days. When we podcast, we might podcast a little early next week. Probably That's on fine. a Tuesday instead of Thursday. So we'll see. But we are due for a break. So if you enjoyed this segment, we appreciate it. If you would like to advertise with. Archie Sports on the website or on this podcast, hashtag the post game. Uh, you can do so by sending an email to mick.light at gmail.com. That's M I C K dot L I T E at gmail.com. We're going to take a quick break. We will be right back. This is the post game brought to you by Archie Sports.com. <laughs>
Welcome back to the post game brought to you by ArchCitySports.com. From the major leagues to the minor leagues, Arch City Sports has you covered all across the Missouri area. In the last segment, we talked a little Cardinals baseball. Now yeah. we're going to move on to football and discuss the I do St. want to Louis say Rams. one thing. One thing. Sorry. You're you cutting off. me off. I, I, I'm not sorry, actually. You're cutting uh, me off. Like... I did make a mistake. It's Steve Sishik. Not Scott Sishik. Not Scott Sishik. Like I had inadvertently said... My little brother's name is Scott. I don't know. We're a bunch of rookie. Scott was on the we're a bunch of we're a bunch of rookie podcast. I make one mistake, you know, but it's okay. Hey, you Whatever. probably would have caught it. I'm sure somebody in, on Twitter would have called you I out. I would have gotten. They're rough. still gonna I, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've I welcome called, it. I deserve it. I've gotten called out. I think twice now by the Twitter trolls that I listen have. to the podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it. Love you guys. You guys. <laughs> uh, I I I think I follow both those people. Both of the people that called me out. And, uh, Why? Why would you do that? Because it's fun. I like the Twitter trolls. You can follow us at Archie Sports on Twitter. Archie nice Sports plug. on Facebook at Nick Yale. At I'm the Manzira. M A N D Z I A R A. And at J Carp Sports Fan One. Uh, we the J Carp, the one and only, the Statmeister. J Carp Sports. All right, let's Jeremy talk Carp. some Rams. <laughs> we got the Rams. We got Mizzou. I think Jeremy some. Rams news yes, we coming do. out about Todd Gurley. Let's Ooh. hear it. Yep. Todd Gurley with, you know, training camps coming up. We're only 49 days away from the start of the NFL season. So training camps right around the corner. Oh, will you? And Todd Gurley is expected to be on the non-football injury list when the Rams training camp does open up. NFI, I believe, right? NFI, non-football injury. Ah, yes. thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Thank Andrew. you, Andrew. Yes. But on a note of bright news, there are no setbacks in his recovery from his ACL injury from the previous year. Is there a projected date that he will be back? Do we As of that? now, there is not, but he w- is expected to be back. Should there be, Jay Carp, Sports Fan 1, <laughs> will be on it. It's a, it's a Jay Carp th- guarantee. I think there was, uh, I think I heard about week four, week five, he'd be, he could be featured. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Either way, there's a that. good duo of running backs the Rams have yeah, right no, now with yeah. Trey Mason and Todd Gurley. And Todd Gurley, Trey Mason, going to be a, you got a speed back, you got a power back. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That that's kind of the way the NFL is going more these days. Yeah. Especially with how it's become more of a passing game, you want those running back yeah. duos. It's it's more it's, yeah, it's gonna say it's more the duo, the one the the pound and gra- the the ground and pound that you have in Todd Gurley and the speed back you have in Trey Mason, both of which who tore up. The University of Missouri, yeah, my school. Speaking of Mizzou, Harold Brantley injured in a car accident a few weeks back. Will not be playing football mm. this season, That's according to Gary Pinkle at SEC Media Days. Uh, big loss for the Mizzou Tigers line. They already lost Marcus Loud. Uh, who, he was a highly projected yeah. defensive. Marcus, Shane, yeah. Marcus Shane Ray got drafted. Marcus yeah. Loud, Marcus Loud got dismissed from the team. Harold Brantley gets injured. Shane Ray gets drafted. Right. Marcus Golden gets drafted. You think so, Loud was being a little too loud? No, for the team, I, I, just, I think it was. Pinkle was like, "All right, you know what?" Something off the else. record, you know, it's probably the reefer. That's why a lot of the a lot of the players usually get kicked off the team. But it was. Uh, it was what is the reefer? What is the reefer? The marijuana. The ah, the, the Kush. The Kush. <laughs> yes, which uh, those Mizzou football players enjoy smoking uh, as as. We've heard in the past, DGB uh, yeah. got in trouble for that. Uh, oh. So as does the Mizzou basketball team. Speaking of that, Kim Anderson, <laughs> great trick. Can, can he like, keep a couple guys on his roster today. for the uh, for the fall or what? Like the 49ers. We've been out there. Uh, you know, I covered the Mizzou b-ball team all last year. I'll be covering them all again this year. Hopefully, they'll give me something more to write about. Last year, it was just lost, 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 Hopefully lost. they give you players nine to write and, about. Nine and 23, I think, was the Yeah, yeah maybe they can get 10 wins. They did beat Florida, though. They yeah, did beat Florida. Yeah, there you go. So, yes, uh, Montecchi Gil Caesar announced that he will be transferring from the university. Montecchi Gil Caesar was the second leading scorer on the team behind Jonathan Williams the third, who also transferred and ended up – I'm not sure if he's announced where he's going yet. Um, I'll get on that, and uh, I should. He's, he's probably going to the big STLCC brand. Probably, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the <laughs> Archers. <laughs> you, think, you, you think? You think? No, he was talking. He was talking about uh, going back down to to maybe Memphis and Tennessee uh, or somewhere in Tennessee mm. there. Um, so I should I should know these things, but you know, with Mizzou being in their off season, I haven't had to cover any any Mizzou athletics right. much since the softball season wrapped up. So. Uh, 
little Mizzou basketball I don't know how news. You though, to that. though Terrence Phillips, uh, out of Oak Hill Academy, um, the uh, half brother of Brandon Knight, who is the on the Mizzou basketball team, he's going to be a freshman. And, and what Kim Anderson was saying about this freshman class is that a lot of these guys are are really stepping up as leaders and and really putting in the work. Terrence Phillips, uh, follow him on Vine and on Instagram. On a Saturday night, he goes in and, and shoots a thousand shots, takes a thousand shots. So he's really putting in the work and uh, really showing the, the sophomores and the juniors how to really handle yourself, which is good because that's what they need. And so hopefully this mm-hmm. young crop of freshmen and sophomores, and you got Wes Clark, who's going to be a junior, that these guys can come in and uh, and really lead this team. And Kim Anderson can do that with a with a solid group of guys. Cause I think you still have to give Kim Anderson a shot. A lot of people yeah. like Kim Anderson in Missouri. Sure uh, at the university, oh, absolutely. and you know, yeah. I mean, the fan base, the alumni like him, and yeah, he had a bad season to start off, but he, everyone has a bad season. Yeah, right. he, I was gonna say he's not. Perfect. He won a national he's championship. Fair. Granted, it was D two, but still, he knows how to coach it's a basketball. He knows how to coach a basketball yeah. team. The SEC is not the easiest uh, easiest conference playing. You know, no. Kentucky with their monster team last year, and, and Bobby Bobby Portis um, from Arkansas last year as well. And you know, the SEC is only getting better. So hopefully. Kim Anderson can help turn this season around, uh, but it's definitely going to be harder to do so without th- Montucky in there. And I think it's really Mizzou's division, aside from Kentucky, it's really Mizzou's division to lose. Because, I mean, te- Mizzou should, and frankly, they they have played up to the level to where they can get into those conference championships, make it deep in the tournament, and they just haven't done that the past few years. So it's really sad to see all these people that get kicked off the team or they're dismissed or they can't handle their business off the court, and, uh, and the university suffers, the, the fan base suffers, and so you don't get those winning results. But obviously I think Kim Anderson is a, a great coach. Uh, it doesn't put up with a lot of crap, and I think that's what you need, especially for these young men that come in here. And they're away from home, and they're they're – out in the town and making possibly poor decisions and, and Anderson, you know, doesn't put up with it and uh, you're gone. So it's about, like you said, just, um, you know, taking, taking shots on a Saturday night, not going out to the bars, not yeah. going out, you know, and doing other questionable. You're, set, things, you're, setting, right? exa- you're setting example yeah. at a young yeah. age, which is good to see. And I think that um, I said it, you know, when I, when I was down there and, and on a couple other radio shows that Kim Anderson is really, uh, really sending the right message by doing that. You know, he I could agree. he could be kicking players off the team left and right, even if they're the best guys. You know, as long as he's sending the right message, I think that's more important than winning basketball games. And I think the alumni and hopefully the student body fan base understands that. So mm-hmm. we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Gets more recognition for the school. Forward. Yeah, and it was uh, Gonzaga that that Jonathan Williams. The third committed to Gonzaga will be getting him for the Bulldogs upcoming yeah. season. Yeah, you know he's yeah. you know, he was he was one player uh, from talking to some other athletes and from talking to some people that he was really the guy that that was well behaved. You know mm-hmm. he had a lot of those. He had the only a couple seniors and he had all those freshman class of of guys that were all getting suspended and uh, he didn't really fit in with many of those guys. And Schamberger was a senior. He didn't really fit in with him much. So I think he was kind of. You kind of understand why he transferred. He didn't have many friends on the team, which is oh, fine. Sure. So it's a shame that he was a leading scorer and Mizzou loses them and a tough loss, but they'll definitely uh, uh, get over it. So we'll have to we'll have to just wait and see for the upcoming season. That's going to do it for this segment of the post game with Mizzou basketball and football and Rams football. Not much news going on there. Up next, we will be discussing WWE. Battleground, St. Louis FC, and St. Louis Blues. Stay tuned. Football. Well, football. Well, football, the wrestling. We'll take a quick break. We're going to be right back. You're listening to the post game brought to you by ArtShittySports.com. Welcome back to the post game brought to you by ArtShittySports.com. From the major leagues to the minor leagues, Arch City Sports has you covered all across the Missouri area. My name is Nick Yale. Alongside Andrew Manziera and Jeremy Carter, Hi. we <laughs> are talking to everything Rams, Mizzou, St. Louis Cardinals. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. men's national team, the football, yeah. the football oh, action, yeah. as well as uh, some St. Louis FC. Before we get into some wrestling, wrestling. talk, we are on wrestling. Periscope currently. Say hello to everybody out there on Periscope. If you'd like to join in, you can follow me on Twitter at Nick Yale to get involved. And follow us on Periscope. All right, boys. What'd you think of that U.S. men's national team loss to Jamaica last night? 
definitely a letdown as far as uh, the U.S. is concerned. First final of the uh, tournament that uh, they have not reached since 2003. So, uh, again, uh, just a, a complete and, I think, utter shock in the soccer community. Oh, yeah, in yeah. the soccer community, more or less. And um, it was really the U.S.'s game to lose, and unfortunately, that I mean, that happened. So, two quick goals by Jamaica in the first half. Uh, and no one, I think, expected Jamaica to really score, let alone score two quick ones on the U.S. But uh, Michael Bradley uh, scores early in the second half on a, a rebound from the Jamaican goalkeeper, uh, fellow US, USL goaltender uh, in the uh, same division as St. Louis FC, part of the uh, Pittsburgh Riverhounds. So um, his name is Ryan... Ryan Thompson. Thompson, Ryan, Ryan Thompson. Thompson. Oh, gosh, that, yeah. That, that, is, sure. that is who it is, Ryan Thompson. Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, they had a beautiful set piece that no one was going to be was gonna stop. Um, so very unfortunate for yep. U.S. losing that game. Uh, a lot of people were calling out Jurgen Klinsmann, saying he's not the answer. They need to get get a different coach. Oh, it's one game. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's right, right. It's, it's, it's one game. It was it's a, frustrating they lost, but still, it was just... Yeah. It was certainly a bad loss, um, but at the same time, you know, I don't think this is this is the end of the world. The U.S. men's national team, as is the U.S. women's national team, are both they're both going places. Soccer is rising in the it's United more in the United States, the so I think it's going to be, it's rising more in St. Louis. It's though. Gonna, it's going to you know that it's, it is rising more in St. Louis. And, and you know why? About that. why? We got a great pro team. Great pro- St. Louis FC, great pro team. Big game this Saturday against the Oklahoma City Energy FC. Uh, Christmas in July happening uh, this Saturday. Got a lot of photo shops coming. Uh, from us at the uh, the interns at St. Louis FC, so it's uh, it's gonna be good. You should be. How you uh, uh, how you liking the internship out there at St. Louis FC? It's great, yeah. Um, really uh, great organization, very nice. Uh, everyone's super, just welcoming and uh, just striving to to get better and and to uh, <laughs> become just an elite organization, even though it's their inaugural season. Um, and I think the players are finally getting adjusted to kind of everything, and they're big with the uh, pro camps. That they're doing uh, there with uh, uh, children of all ages. So again, a lot of the players really like the uh, the atmosphere in the community. And uh, our our periscope just fell, Nick. Our our, our, peris- our periscope. Our periscope just our fell. Our peris- viewers yeah. are what the- six viewers? Six yeah. viewers. Six five. five. They are they are. I'm sh- five. Five I'm, viewers. I'm sure, they're upset. Well. Yes. What? Uh, pa- pa- yeah. What the heck? Periscope. What the heck? Yeah. We're sorry. Nick's, Periscope's falling out. We don't have a stand for the for the uh, for the camera on the periscope. Yeah. Right sorry now. This is this is you are watching. That is that is absolutely brutal. Yeah. Absolutely. It brutal. happens. Hey, goes goes to slew. You know, if you just if you would go to slew. We, this, have a, uh, we have one one person from slew on th- here. There you go. Yeah. Go to slew. Okay, looks like a bunch of. <laughs> 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 hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> Uh, definitely not happening. Even though we are we are in a closet, as we uh, mentioned earlier. Um, yeah. Thanks, thanks to Nick. I was uh, for the record, I was against this. It's the, but, hey, who uh, was it? Yeah, it's 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 uh, you gotta yeah. gotta do it in clo- closed area, closed section. Uh, yeah. It's all about that good audio. It's all about the good quality for the podcast. Yeah. Quality before quantity. Yeah, St. Louis mm-hmm. St. Louis FC. Uh, Nick Bibbs getting the uh, USL team of the week. USL well team deserved. Week. He's uh, he's playing really well. Richard Dixon's been out for a few months with uh, torn MCL injury. Uh, Oscar gasecki has been out uh, with an injury. James Moose has been out. So Bibbs is starting to get more playing time. Um, you know, the Philadelphia native uh, earning team of the week last week for his, uh, his play against uh, FC Montreal and Toronto FC 2. So it was uh, great to see uh, Bibbs get the uh, get the goal more or less. It was an own goal on Toronto, but uh, Bibbs did, uh, did get the, uh, the assist, I guess, if you will. So, yeah, the uh... – so I mean, it's it's good to see that he's he got team of the week. St. Louis FC definitely moving in the right direction uh, with that team, and you can go out to Worldwide Technology Park this Saturday, July twenty fifth, for Christmas in July. Uh, if you haven't been out to an SDLFC game, definitely check it out. Definitely for worth sure. definitely worth it. Um, you know, great experience. Fans go crazy, so it's definitely a, definitely a good time out there. But uh, moving on, uh, I think we're talking a little uh, WWE. Yes, we Battleground. are. Battleground, Jeremy, Jeremy, take over. Oh, yeah. Well, last week was, this past Sunday was WWE Battleground, um, live from the Scott Trade Center. And let me tell you, it was unbelievable. Uh, sellout crowd. I had friends, great friends of mine who happened to go to the event. And it was just an electric 
sight, John Cena retained his United States title in a wonderful match against um, newcomer Kevin Owens. I should say newcomer from WWE's perspective. He's been a wrestler for over a decade. But the thing everybody remembers was at the end of the night, in the main event with the World Heavyweight title on the line, Brock Lesnar came face-to-face -face with the legendary Undertaker, who, believe it or not, has been wrestling in WWE for 25 years. Can you guys believe that? I now, mean, that is longer than I have been on this earth yeah. as a human being. How about I mean, that? So, that's a long time. Yeah, 25 years he's been wrestling for WWE. He hasn't been seen since earlier this year during WrestleMania. He usually makes one-off appearances, but he's back. And... It set up a match between the two at SummerSlam, which will be in about four to five weeks in Brooklyn, New York. But the whole crowd was electric the entire night, and I was watching it at a, at a friend's house, but you could just feel how excited the whole event was, the whole evening was. Because St. Louis is a wrestling town. Obviously, it's a baseball town. But some people really might not have a grasp on how amazing professional wrestling has as far as history in St. Louis, whether it's from... Wrestling at the Chase, which was a frequent program in downtown St. Louis for nearly 30-plus years. The St. Louis Wrestling Club. A lot of legendary performers were in St. Louis at many times. And it was just an all-around big event, and WWE plans on having plenty more in the future here in the Gateway City. Wrestling big, soccer's big, baseball's big. Once more we haven't talked about, and we'll close, close this uh, podcast out with, is the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, we've been off uh, for a few weeks so now. the biggest news With me the uh, being out of town down in Columbia. Um, but, T.J. Oshie, going to the Washington Capitals. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, you're the expert on uh, St. Louis Blues. Tell us a little bit about that. I wouldn't say an expert. I just, I'm just i a hockey fan. <laughs> we say expert. You know. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. Gives him some credentials. Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it, it's, uh, it's not surprising to see the uh, Blues – make a trade like that. I think everyone kind of knew it was coming after the uh, third third year in a row of a first playoff round exit. So um, I think initial reaction was still shocked by a lot of fans, and I think that uh, – I think Oshie was shocked too, he said in, uh, on Twitter. Um, but overall, I think the Blues uh, – it's interesting to see kind of what his value was and, and what teams were willing to give away for him. And getting Troy Brower, uh, Phoenix Copley, and a third-round pick from the Capitals in exchange for TJ Oshie. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's an overall good trade. Um, I don't think that that really makes the Blues a cup contender, per no, se, with, no. with that trade. So Baby steps, basically. Yeah, and, and and honestly, Troy Brower is the only one on the roster now that has is a Stanley Cup champion. He won back in, I believe, 2010 with the Chicago Blackhawks before playing um, in Washington the, the last uh, four years. So. He brings the veteran experience. He's uh, only 29, I believe, uh, so he's not that old. He, you know, he's he's a grinder. Goes out there, uh, fights some tough guys, and and really gives the uh, the Blues now some really tough tough guy in the puck. So it'll just be interesting to see what 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 they do coming into the the season. Prospect camp ended a few weeks ago, and nice to see Robbie Fabry back. He had a good camp. Uh, when I was there watching, um, and this is his second year back, Ivan Barbashev, uh, promising young center, uh, ho hopefully playing in the uh, Chicago Wolves organization this year. So he'll make the step up into the uh, into the AHL. Vince Dunn was there. The Blues' second uh, second round draft pick, 26th overall in this year's draft. So uh, a lot, lot of young faces, uh, a lot of promising talent, I think, that we have coming up. But as far as uh, this season goes, and obviously, you know, you want to look at long-term goals and, and you want to look at promising futures. But the thing the Blues really need to focus on right now is, is uh, is trying to put together a team that can advance past yes, first round of the playoffs. Round. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, it, it, as well as locking up Vladimir Tarasenko uh, for eight years, sixty million, which I think well deserved. Uh, again, we go back to uh, you know Vladimir Tarasenko, seventy three points, seventy seven games in the uh, regular season in the playoffs. Again, very well. He had seven points in six games, right behind Shattenkirk with eight points. So it's, he's one of the guys that obviously steps up. He's ready. He's ready for the task, and he's ready for the pressure. And I think he, uh, I think he's going to do really well. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the post game, brought to you by Arch City Sports. As always, like we said, if you want to get involved, tweet at us at Arch City Sports on Twitter. Give us a like at Arch City Sports on Facebook, and if you would like to advertise. With this podcast, the post game, send an email to mick.light 
at gmail.com, M-I-C-K dot L-I-T-E at gmail.com. We'll we, see you next week. We want to hear from you. We if, do. Yes. If we're if we're annoying, let us know. Yeah. yeah. If you think we're delightful as I do, let us know. Yeah. If you want to hear some songs, let us know. Any any thoughts? We like to hear them. We appreciate the feedback. We love the really, fans. I mean, if you really think we suck, just let us know. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. to. <laughs> we, we probably do. We are, we probably, I would definitely agree. Yeah, we probably do. So, <laughs> Anyways. See, see you next week, guys. Take care, everybody.